Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Winter has now started, of course, and it has begun on a cold note. Temperatures running below the 30 year average at the moment. There has even been some snow. Will that stay the case as we head through the next two weeks? Well, I was in Blenheim Palace earlier this week, and one thing I noticed was, apart from it being cold, a good deal of surface water still in the surrounding fields. And I suspect that could be a big factor as we head through at least the first week of a forecast period, because unsettled with rain looks likely to be the outcome rather than cold and dry. So with that said, let's start. And I'll begin with a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT Thursday, the 7th of December. And immediately at the outset here, there is a westerly flow across all parts of the UK. So the Atlantic has returned. The cold weather was coming down from the northeast, but winds have now switched back into west or southwesterly direction. It's unsettled and temperatures are rising. So as I run this sequence, what we see is that continues to be the case. Further heavy bands of rain moving from west at times into the weekend, it stays quite mixed. Early next week though, some indications of a change beginning to shape up. At this point on Monday, it's still quite unsettled. There's just possibly a weak ridge of high pressure toppling across the UK. But watch what happens in the, in the days which follow. High pressure starts to build in from the west. It's still quite mixed at this point, but towards the end here, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, high pressure becomes a lot more dominant, at least across the southern half of the UK, perhaps still more changeable there in the north, some Atlantic disturbances bringing some patchy outbreaks of rain. But there is a good signal here from this GFS model run for a change to take place through the second half of the first week. The 850 HPA temperature and jet stream animation just reinforces the message. As I run it, what we see is the jet streams making a beeline for the UK in the short term. But towards the end, there's signs here that it's going to be migrating northwards as high pressure builds in across the UK. So a change again being signposted here. I don't think temperatures are going to be a big factor through the first week, but I'll just show a couple of charts to illustrate the values which are being suggested. Maximums here on Friday, perhaps 10, 11 in the southeast colder as you head northwards, but certainly nowhere near as cold as we saw during the first few days of December. Also, overnight lows look like being a lot higher. There were some very sharp frosts at the start of the month, but here are the forecast minimums on Saturday night into Sunday morning, six or seven in southern and central regions, a bit colder there in the north, but as I say, nothing at all like what we saw earlier on, so a much reduced risk of frost, at least through the first week. Moving forwards to Tuesday to look at forecast maximums, 10s, 11s, 12s across England and Wales, a bit lower there as you head northwards. But it's looking relatively mild through the first week of a forecast period. I've already mentioned rain, but another concern is the uh, possibility of strong winds at times. This is from the UKV model. It shows forecast maximum wind gust speeds at 15 GMT on Sunday the 10th of December. I've just pulled it out as one example because I think there will be several days when winds do become a factor. Often the strongest winds are likely to be in western and northern coastal counties. This one showing gusts of around 60 to 70 miles an hour there just off to the west of Wales and in the Irish Sea. So definitely something to keep an eye on as we go through the first week. The Morgrep's G charts uh, just really point in the same direction here. They reinforce the message. This one is showing forecast wind gust speeds for London. So we're going through the first week there. Each line represents one of the runs in the ensemble. The windiest conditions look like being between the 9th and the 11th of December. Some of the runs going up to 40 to 50 miles an hour here and then one or two going higher up towards 60 a couple of days later. But as I say, I think the strongest winds will be in the west and northwest. The Mulgrep Street chart here for Liverpool illustrates that. A few of the runs going up to or just above 70 miles an hour there. 
As I say, when you, when you get a few runs showing that, they are in a minority, so it's not the most likely outcome in an ensemble forecast, but it's just illustrating the possibilities. It looks as though a lot of the runs there are going for around 50 to 55, and then a couple of days later as well, around 50 miles an hour. But there's that possibility of stronger winds. If, if one of the runs or more shows it, then it's at least a theoretical possibility. But as I say at the moment, somewhere around 50 to 55 looks like the most likely scenario in the Liverpool area, at least as a maximum. Rainfall. There wasn't much to begin with in December, but it's a wetter picture now, which has returned with the Atlantic coming back. These charts are showing the aggregate forecasts for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models. Totals are in millimetres. The highest values tending there to be in the north and the west. Very typical, as you would expect when the weather's blowing in from the Atlantic. Going forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, totals have continued to increase, but not dramatically so. A lot of the rain looks like falling in the first five days maybe day six and seven, but later on, the trend, as I've been saying, is towards drier conditions. But a key point here is that all parts of the UK can expect significant amounts of rain, at least through the first five to seven days. And with that saturated ground, which I mentioned at the start, the risk of further flooding is, of course, increased. So, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, Thursday the 14th of December, and as I mentioned at this stage, high pressure is building in from the west, so it's pointing towards a more settled period, potentially. The Canadian model, similar, the high pressure, they're also building up from the southwest. The German ICON model, consistent. The ECM, so the European model, a little bit different in terms of the orientation of the high pressure cell, but the general theme is similar. And finally, the UK Met Office. Again, some subtle differences there, but the key takeaway is that high pressure is starting to become a more important player in the UK's weather. So take them all together. I think there is a reasonable signal for drier conditions, at least across southern and central Britain, to develop towards the end of week one. In terms of temperatures, well, high pressure building up from the southwest, it's not a particularly cold pattern by any means, although if it's high pressure builds far enough northwards, blocks off the Atlantic flow, and we end up with calm conditions, the possibility of clear skies, it could turn cold or even very cold at the surface, despite the air aloft being relatively warm. The ground cools down very quickly when we get calm conditions during the long nights which we have at this time of the year. So it is something to keep an eye on. Will that trend develop, therefore, as we head through the second week? Well, it is all about trends, as I just said, and probabilities at this range, starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London, 850 HPA temperatures are across the top half, and as I've just hinted, the air aloft may become quite mild. You can see a lot of runs there through this period are climbing above a thick black line, which is a 30-year norm, a thick purple line there, the ensemble mean is also well above it. So taking this at face value, it actually looks quite mild through the second week, but that doesn't necessarily correspond to temperatures at the ground level, as I've been saying. Rainfall, well, not many spikes there along the bottom, so it's a relatively dry picture. Probably not completely dry, but lots of dry weather through the second week. So good news, because that should start to mean the flood risk reduces. Will there be any snow around? Well, with air temperatures like this, above a 30-year average, well above naught Celsius, some of them going up to five or ten, any precipitation which falls from the sky will not be snow, even if it's cold at the surface, just because the air, because snow can't form with temperatures like this at 1500 meters above sea level. It's, it's totally different to having cold air aloft and low temperatures at the surface to having mild air aloft and low temperatures at the surface. 
So, two meter temperatures, well, as, I've, as I'm saying, despite the likelihood of relatively uh, high temperatures aloft, it could be quite cold at times down at the ground level. Forecast maximums across the top, there's, there's a fair amount of dark green shade and those are runs going for between one and five Celsius. The overnight lows along the bottom, lots of dark green, also some blue. The blues are below naught Celsius, so they would support uh, air frost rather than just ground frost, which a lot of the dark green ones would. So possibly a rather chilly picture through the second week, if this is right. Up to Manchester, very, very similar. Not a great deal to say about it. It's very consistent with the London graph. Likewise, a two meter uh, temperature data table, it's reasonably consistent as well. Those possibly rather frosty nights at times through the second week and daytime temperatures close to or maybe a little bit below the average if this is correct, but fair amount of variance there. There's still quite a lot of light green, so six to uh, 10 Celsius maximums. A lot is going to depend on the amount of cloud exactly where high pressure becomes centered through this period. Up to Glasgow, once more, it's a similar story, but there are a few more rain spikes along the bottom. And towards the very end, the snow row creeps up to six. It can take the maximum of 33. So six, six runs out of 33 are forecasting the possibility of snow right at the very end, just two days before Christmas, of course. But it's still quite a low chance. So I think all these ensemble graphs really are suggesting a good deal of quiet weather through the second week. And the two meter temperature data table for Glasgow is also, it's a little bit different. There is an upwards trend here. There is more light green appearing through the days. So six to 10 Celsius, possibly milder in the northern half of the UK through this period than in the, in, in the south. The frost risk there ongoing, moderate, maybe quite high at times through the second week. Lots of, a fair amount of blue, I wouldn't say lots, but certainly the possibility if the sky's clear that frost will form quite readily. But I think the, the interesting thing there is that it may well be, not, the daytime temperatures may well be a little bit higher than in southern Britain based on this data. Rainfall through the second week. This is showing the uh, percentage chance of five millimeters or more falling on days eight, nine, and 10. Wettest in the Northwest looks likely to be the case. So perhaps the Atlantic continuing to influence things there. Disturbances moving in um, across the Northwest of UK with high pressure centered across the Southern half. Going forwards to days 11, 12, and 13, the general pattern is the same, but perhaps at this stage, the rain risk beginning to extend further eastwards and southwards. It could just be scatter in the ensemble model because the further ahead you go, the greater the range of solutions which are generally been shown to be possible. So I think taking all that together, along with this, which is a mean surface level pressure plot from the GEFS model on Sunday the 17th of December, and it has high pressure there building up from the south. It's quite a strong signal for this. If you remember, this is generated by averaging out all, all of the runs in the GEFS, and quite often you end up with something very um, not very well formed. It can be quite messy, but on this particular update, it's quite clearly defined that high pressure is going to be centered there across or just the south of the UK. So that could well fit in with the idea that the lowest temperatures, at least during the days, will be in the south and that calm area of high pressure. And the mean surface level pressure table for York, so we're going forward through the second week also, supports the same idea, lots of runs with higher than average pressure into a mix. In fact, some are going for very high pressure there, 35% uh, in the pink category. That's over 1,040 millibars. That's the highest it reaches. But even towards the end of over the trend for the last few days is for pressure to, to be declining. It's still staying above the average according to most of the runs in the ensemble. But as I as I've been saying, with it building up from the south, perhaps becoming centred, close to the UK, 
It's for northwest, where it is more likely to stay changeable, a greater chance of rain, also milder temperatures. A quick look at the Northern Hemisphere profile 10 days ahead, based on the output from the deterministic model, so Sunday the 17th of December. This one is from the European ECM model, so the high pressure which I've been discussing across the southern half of the UK centred there. And it, it, it also, I mean, there are some indications here that high pressure may be higher there over the pole. And if that situation defaults, there's always a chance that high pressure could start to come into play from the north, but not being shown at this point, but something to watch out for. The GFS model also has a, has a similar profile, as does the uh, Canadian model. Maybe the vortex there a bit deeper to the northwest on this one. But all in all, there's a reasonable amount of consistency about what the general pattern across the Northern Hemisphere is at day 10. Is there going to be a sudden stratospheric warming event? There's some speculation about this at the moment. So sudden stratospheric warming event, a major one, is when winds reverse at uh, 60 degrees north at this level in the atmosphere, 10 HPA, so well up into the stratosphere. Well, according to the GEFS, there's good, there's good agreement between all the runs until about the 15th of December. They're staying positive, so there's no sudden stratospheric warming event, certainly in the short term. Then, as we head past the middle part of the month, the lines start to spread out, so a greater range of solutions. But even at the very end, all of the runs there are staying in positive territory. It's really when they get down to here that we'd be talking about an SSW. Now, with that said, the longer range ECM output and GEFS output both show the um, zonal wind speed slowing down as we head past Christmas into the new year. And certainly with the ECM, quite a few of the individual runs, perhaps around 25 to 30 percent, show a reversal taking place. Now, if that happened, it would increase the chance of cold weather, although the lead time is generally several weeks, so perhaps towards late January into the early part of February, we'd be looking at an increased chance of a cold period. If one doesn't happen before then, which of course it may. Something to keep an eye on. Anyway, coming back to the next two weeks and the summary. Week one is going to be characterised by unsettled weather, so wet and windy periods. Temperatures often close to or above the average, but by the end, maybe turning cold as high pressure starts to have more of a say in matters. Week two, quite settled and dry. A reasonable amount of confidence for that general theme to happen. The details, though, are very uncertain. So temperatures and frost and fog risks will be dependent upon the position of high of the high pressure. But the favoured solution over the UK as a whole is for temperatures to be rather close to the average with patchy frost. It may be the case that the lower temperatures, at least for, on some days, are in the south and the southeast with, in, in places which are closer to the centre of that high pressure. So, uh, there we have it. It's, it's unsettled through the really the first week, wet and windy periods, that risk of more flooding, the ground being saturated, then high pressure builds in. It may be Come, it may become quite cold, but a lot will depend on exactly where it centres. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. As usual, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, then please consider hitting the like button below. Also, subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. And of course, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thank you very much now. Bye.